Hey everyone, we're back for episode two of our Bronze to Diamond series. For anyone who's joining for the first time, we've set a terrible Bronze ELO player on a mission to achieve Diamond in just four months with Skill Capped. This week, we're teaching both him and you guys at home how to recall properly. This is an essential skill to master in order to climb. Nama's base timings are insanely bad right now, and he's making things way more difficult than they should be for himself. We're sure everyone watching will share some of the issues that he faces, and you literally cannot have a strong lane phase without good recall timings, so let's break down the basics. But first, at the beginning of each guide, we'll be covering a bit on how the journey is going for him. Last week, we covered some simple CSing tips during the laning phase, since we had deemed that that was the most important area to begin with. Before, he used to average around 4 to 4.5 CS per minute, but as we can see, that's gone up to consistently being above 5 per minute and nearly reaching 6. This has helped him climb two divisions up to Silver 3. That's a huge improvement with some basic concepts. He found that the most helpful tip happened to be the simplest. He's now focusing way more on last hitting, rather than trying to do it all at the same time. Remember, nothing else matters unless you land your last hits, and he's definitely taken this to heart. Good, so his CS is improving. Now let's get those rookie numbers up even more by discussing recalling. As always, Nama's lessons are going to be recorded and put into the full course on the site, so you can follow along at home and learn exactly what he learns. We'll never teach Nama anything unless it's recorded and put in the course, so keep in mind that he will be climbing only with the information that you find here. If we ever recommend him guides to watch, we'll also be putting them into the course as well for your convenience. When it comes to the basics of recalling, there's three main things that you should keep in mind. Gold, health and mana, and the state of the wave. Those three concepts are crucial for making good recall decisions for yourself, but once you master them, you can start punishing your opponent and forcing them to take bad recalls as well. We'll be keeping things on the simpler side for now, but we'll definitely cover some tips on that in this guide. First, let's start with gold. The simplest and first thing that you should consider whenever going for any recall is how much gold you need to get a good item purchase. For example, as any mage, you ideally want to base with 1300 gold to purchase a lost chapter. Such a simple concept is constantly screwed up in low elo and especially by Nama. Take a look at this situation. Right now, he's already sitting on his lost chapter. After shoving this wave, he's got a little over 1300 gold. He sticks around and gets a turret plate, putting him at around 1500 gold. That's precisely enough gold for his GLP, which on Ari is literally one of the strongest power spikes in the game. Instead of basing for it at a good timing, Nama stays for some reason and immediately dies since he was still in lane without his ultimate. Let's flip it over to Echo's perspective. He already had Hextech Revolver and a Ruby Crystal. The second that he got enough gold for his Proto Belt, he immediately recalled and bought it. This is a baby tip, but clearly very effective against players who aren't following it as well. Echo was rewarded instantly by basing for his power spike. Okay, that's the basics of the basics. Now let's talk about actually planning your recall based on how much gold you have and how much you need. For that, we have to first learn how much gold each wave gives. Melee minions give 21 gold each and caster minions give 14 gold each. Thus, in a standard wave, if you last hit everything, you'll earn 105 gold. But it's not that simple. It actually takes you around 10 seconds or so to clear the wave. If you gain around 2 gold passively per second, then you can assume that you'll have 125 more gold after clearing a standard wave. Then we account for human error. In episode 1, we covered how you should always try and focus the caster creeps first, that way you're guaranteed and there's no way that you miss any of them. But when it comes to the melee minions, it's understandable to miss on average 1 per wave. So we take that prior 125 gold and then subtract 21 gold meaning that you can expect to gain around 100 gold every time you kill a standard wave. Then there's cannon waves, which comes every third wave. Cannon minions give a baseline of 60 gold, which does go up a bit as the game goes on. So we take the 105 gold from a standard wave and just add 60. Then it takes around 15 seconds to kill a cannon wave, which is an extra 30 gold. In total, you can expect around 195 gold from a cannon wave, and again, minus 21 due to human error, so around 170. Let's break down a situation where Nama could have used this information to his advantage. Here, he's playing Ari versus Echo, and is sitting on 1100 gold. What do you think he should do based on these circumstances? First thing you should have asked is whether the wave behind him is a cannon wave. Super bonus points to those of you who knew that just based on game time. 
Therefore, he should have already been thinking that he should be shoving this next cannon wave as quickly as possible to get around 200 gold. That would let him base for a clean loss chapter by. Instead, he lingers in lane, potentially hoping to punish Echo. It's fine to want to extend your health lead that you've acquired, but if you're unsure of whether or not you can actually capitalize on something, then planning for a good recall is something that you can always fall back on. Echo is a slippery assassin, and trying to punish him as a skill shot extensive mage such as Ari seems idealistic. Staying in lane causes him to stick around for a disastrous 2v2 skirmish. Warwick getting caught is obviously not his fault, but imagine if he was as strong as he should have been at this point. With Lost Chapter and full mana, he may have been able to get a return kill here. Okay, so you need to play around how much gold you need for your next item, and plan around it effectively based on how much gold you'll get from future waves. These are easy fixes, but you can take these tips to the next level and plan around your opponent's bases as well. Keep in mind that you're generally going to be matched with players of equal skill to you. Oftentimes, you're both going blow for blow with each other and going even in lane. That means that you often have roughly as much gold as your opponent. Even if one of you is winning, on average, CS is worth 20 gold per minion. So let's say that you're ahead 12 CS. You should know that your opponent has 240 gold less than you. Now, we don't expect any of you or Nama to start using this following tip right away as it is a bit higher level. However, you should likely start at least considering and practicing it so that you can eventually win lanes purely off of recall timings. Let's take a look at a game where Nama could have technically applied this concept, and that's only because he's against Ari, one of his main champions. He should know exactly what items Ari wants to buy when she bases. Talon starts Longsword as his first item. Knowing that, at what gold value do you think Talon would love to base at? Finishing Tiamat off with 975 gold is the correct answer here. Imagine that situation. Talon comes back to base with a completed Tiamat, whereas Ari only gets two amplifying tomes at 975 gold. That is a huge item mismatch. Talon would easily get perma priority in lane and roam all over the map, while Ari is stuck in lane wondering why her team doesn't listen to her pings. As awesome as that would be, it's not entirely realistic. If Ari is going even in CS and allows Talon to base at 975 gold for free, then there was a much bigger problem that game for Ari. Melee versus ranged matchup should not be going even for that long. A more realistic goal for Talon would be to base at around 700 gold. Talon would get two longswords in that scenario, which is an awesome buy for an AD mid laner. Meanwhile, Ari gets an amplifying tome and a cloth armor. Yuck, that's a horrible buy. Talon would crush any fight that revolved around him and Ari with how much stronger he is even though they have the same exact amount of gold. Not everyone spends certain gold amounts as efficiently as others. Let's see how the lane actually plays out. On the third wave, right before Nama is going to kill this cannon, he has 335 gold. The cannon and two casters are worth around 90. Then two more standard waves after worth 105 gold each would put him at around 635 gold. Add a minute's worth of passive gold into that and he's for sure at 700 gold. With basically full health and two potions left, he can easily get all of those last hits and hit that recall perfectly. So what happens? He instead tanks a lot of damage. Then he wastes his mana on a few creeps over and over again. The end result? He's forced to stay in lane for a long time, eventually getting ganked and handing over a kill. Yes, he could have avoided that gank in other ways, but we're strictly covering recalling in this guide. If he was insane at playing around base timings based on gold, he'd avoid the gank and come back to lane ahead of Ari. Like we said though, that's a higher level concept. Doing the mental math, then planning ahead based off of it, then playing the matchup appropriately, and then forcing a recall timing at that precise time is not easy. We're just covering this so that you know what you can technically strive for when it comes to recalls. All right, let's move on. Next up is basing your recalls off of health and mana. We've recommended that Nama run teleport all the time on Ari and Orianna. Number one, because that's usually just correct for them in the first place but number two, because it might expedite the learning process when it comes to recalling. Teleport offers a lot of new options when it comes to recalling, especially when it revolves around playing with health and mana. Let's take a look at a case where this occurred. Nama follows Lux into the river for a bit, and as he walks back into lane, goes for a bit of a trade onto her, ending in his loss. That was awful. Or was it? Lux is now half mana, and the wave is pushing toward her. She's kind of stuck in lane for a bit, so Nama takes his recall and teleports back to lane. With full resources, he's able to eventually wear down her mana pool and convert that into some denied creeps and a turret plate for himself. We're quite certain that he didn't plan this at all and just got lucky, but it's a good learning experience. 
Hopefully he realized that he can get big advantages by baiting health and mana out of his opponents in a trade and then just teleporting back to lane with full resources. Likewise, Lux should realize that non-lethal damage versus teleport targets is not worth going for and instead should focus on making sure that she gets a clean recall off without giving up too much. Nama with a decent lead now is running low on mana himself. He used up a lot of it to push and punish Lux. With the wave here, what do you think Nama should do now to get an even bigger lead? Hopefully you looked at his gold and realized he's really close to Lost Chapter and only needs one standard wave to get it. Not only that, but like we said, he's a bit low on mana and should replenish that as soon as possible. The pro move here would be to place his ball in the middle of the wave and use his ultimate to burst it down and get a clean recall. We see this often from champions like Victor, Rumble, Vladimir, Lux, etc. If you have an AoE ultimate, then using it to clear a wave instantly is a totally fine move. In that case, Nama would be able to get his lost chapter, and unless Lux did the same, she'd be stuck in lane by the time Nama came back. And the same thing as before would happen. With his lost chapter, Nama could push Lux out of lane with his extra mana and gain an even bigger lead just like before. Even without his ultimate, he would be in a dominant position in lane. Instead, he sticks around, not really thinking about forcing a base timing. The next time the two brawl, Nama is clearly ahead in experience, but is unable to pressure further due to his lack of mana. Otherwise, health and mana are pretty simple at the end of the day. If you're low on either resource, it's usually just a good idea to base. Duh. We keep referencing something called clean recalls, so let's clear that up now for anyone who doesn't know what that means. The final thing that you need to think about before basing is the state of the wave. Based on our observations from Nama's games, he's clearly not thinking about this. Okay, so when you're recalling, you're obviously not in late. During that period of time, you want to miss as few minions as possible so that you don't lose out on gold and XP. The simplest way of doing this is by crashing your own wave into the enemy tower before recalling. In those cases, two things can occur. Number one, the incoming enemy wave crashes while yours is still under their tower. This causes their minions to lag behind a bit in when they actually get into lane. With their wave lagging behind, it causes your own minions to walk up further in the lane and theirs to walk up a bit less, causing the minions to crash much closer to the enemy side of the lane. When this happens, the enemy reinforcing wave joins the fight faster, giving the enemy minions an advantage. This is known as the even minion rule. They'll overpower your own minions, denying farm from your opponent while keeping more enemy minions alive, saving valuable farm for yourself. This is known as a slow push and it's the best outcome for you off of a crashing wave. The other outcome is that the enemy tower kills off your own minions before the enemy wave gets there. With nothing blocking their way, both waves will crash normally, resulting in a neutral lane state. Not good for you, but also not bad. Thus, you almost always want to crash a wave before recalling. You especially want to do this when the wave is already slow pushing away from you. Remember that previous example that we just showed? Nama just left the wave pushing toward his opponent. He denied himself a ton of farm and experience for no reason when he could have very easily finished crashing it before he left. That's almost all there is to it when it comes to recalling based off of wave state. Just make sure that you crash before most of your recalls and you're good to go. On the other hand, we can use that information to punish your opponents when they take bad recalls themselves. Let's take a look at a final game. Nama is playing Orianna in top against Adarius. He notices a fight going on in his own jungle and appropriately reacts, scoring a return kill and double buffs for himself. As a ranged champion with double buffs, Nama lays down the law on this Darius, making his life miserable and forcing him out of lane. In this situation, what do you think Nama should do to plan out his next recall? Hopefully, it's clear that Darius didn't accomplish literally the one rule we just gave for recalling based on the wave. He didn't get to fully crash his own wave. His own minions are now heavily overpowering Nama's, and he's losing a ton of farm every second that he's not there. Technically, Nama can punish this in a bunch of different ways, but we'll cover the one based on recalling, obviously. There is one specific situation in which you can ignore the previous rule. You can recall without crashing on your own wave if your opponent has been forced out of lane and the wave is slow pushing toward you already. Both of these conditions have been met. Darius had to base and the wave is decisively pushing toward Nama. Right now, you can base for a tier of the goddess and start stacking that ASAP. After recalling, while both him and Darius are walking back to lane, Darius's minions will be overpowering his own. When they're both back, Nama will have a huge wave to farm near his tower. Meanwhile, Darius will have nothing. That's a huge win, especially this early into the game. A small tip for doing so is to clear out some enemy minions before basing though. You don't want the enemy wave to overpower yours too quickly. 
kill enemy minions until they have just a slight advantage over yours, usually leaving your own wave at a 2-3 minion deficit as the way to do it. This way, it doesn't overpower your own wave that fast, and gives you enough time to recall and walk back before the huge wave crashes into your own tower. In this specific case, Nama should kill two melee minions. That would only leave him at a one minion deficit, but his own two melee minions are already super low and he needs to account for that. This can be a bit tricky, but it's usually not. This just happens to be a fairly specific case and sometimes some estimations are required. Unfortunately, Nama chooses the worst possible option for punishing Darius. Instead of holding the wave and allowing his own minions to die, he instead kills the wave and pushes it back into Darius. That's exactly what he wanted. When Nama finally pushes the wave and looks to set up his recall, he's at 36 CS to Darius' 23, but Darius has 7 minions to farm here, so it's really only a 6 CS difference at the end of the day. From this game-winning situation, Nama only got a minor advantage. That's a huge failure in our book, and it's because he didn't understand how to punish a poor recall. Played correctly, he could have easily gotten a 20-25 to 25 CS lead from this wave state. Of course, that's getting into knowing how to freeze waves territory, but league concepts go hand in hand. We'll definitely be discussing freezing in depth soon, so he doesn't blunder this hard ever again. Alright, that wraps up the basics of recalling. Let's wrap things up with our weekly quiz. Retrieving information previously learned is the most effective way of retaining knowledge, which is the foundation for how our entire site is built. Don't worry though, this first quiz is pretty easy, so we don't trigger your pop quiz PTSD. We've got two easy questions this week. Number one, what setting should you use when trying to last hit waves with AoE abilities? The answer, normal casting, as it allows you to angle your abilities to hit exactly the minions that you want to hit. Question number two, what's a specific break point for one of your main champions? Hopefully since last week, you've been paying more attention to how your champion specifically clears caster creeps. For Ari, one of them is at level 3, when she's used a minion dematerializer on the wave so that she can double Q the backline. Also, let us know if you're joining in on Nama's journey and if your CS went up last week. Let us know in the comments below. Join us again next week for part 3 of the series. We'll see you there.